On Monday morning, all the students are summoned to the gymnasium. Hail, choirs of angels! I know you were all disappointed that this weekend's weather prevented the usual shopping trips. So I've decided on a little change to this year's Secret Santa event. Something to show the triumph of imagination and goodwill over money. Something to use your creative minds. And your hands. What is she up to? We're going to make holiday cards! She waves her hand at the stage where boxes of supplies have been set up. I've supplied construction paper, glue, glitter, crayon, scissors, and sequins. Miss Darden is bringing in the past year's worth of expired magazines. So, if you're not certain of your drawing talents, you can cut out pictures to decorate your cards with. I hear murmurs around me. Some people seem to think this idea is ridiculous, though I'm not sure why. Instead of giving people physical gifts, you can express what you think they might like to have or be. After all, isn't it the thought that counts? Giving people only the idea of a present offers up a wider range of possibilities, but also makes it harder to feel satisfied with something simple. Most people could have bought a cute trinket without much thought and felt they'd done enough, but now writing happy holidays and being done with it would seem rude. And to help nurture your feelings of creativity and fun, all classes today are cancelled and there will be pizza for lunch. Enjoy! Hmm. Holiday cards for me usually mean New Year's greeting cards, commonly with a dark or red background and decorated with stars or fireworks. I'm not sure if that's what American students would expect, and it doesn't meet Possum's description of things someone would like to be or to have. I hang back for a moment to watch the others. People are picking up large sheets of thick colored paper to make their cards from. Most people take one sheet, but some take several. I should probably grab at least one quickly to be sure I have something to work with. What color do I want? Um, I think I did red last time. I'm gonna do the color of magic I'm in right now. I'm still not entirely sure with Barbara. <laughs> I could do some testing here, or I could just wait till her route and fiddle around. That will make any sparkles stand out more strongly. That leaves the subject of decorations. What sort of imagery would Barbara appreciate? I don't know her taste enough to guess anything about what she would like to have to receive a own, but what would she like to be? Um, I think we did Mysterious last time, right? No, we did... Or did we do, do Brave? I don't remember. It might have been Brave. I think it was Brave and there was something else after that. Let's... <sighs> Is that too flirty? Alright, let's try Brave again. I managed to find a fantasy magazine with pictures of women in armor brandishing swords. Maybe she would appreciate that. Some images of cowboys on the open prairie as well for that American touch. Now that my design is planned, I set to work cutting and pasting. Alright, it's when we talk to her that we have a choice. I lay out my basic design and then search for glitter to enhance the decoration. Okay, we can skip some of this. Um... So we did have an adventure last time. How about... Crush your enemies? Be able to strike down your enemies and ride to victory. See, she's stronger than everyone. She can crush anything in her path. And she leaves a trail of glitter everywhere she goes. Oh, she liked that one! Hey! I got you, girl. Huh. She takes the card. Alright! I'll take that. And oh, thank you. What? 
Um, <laughs> you always act like a kid. I think we did this last time. Yeah. I'm not gonna be rude to my secret Santa. <laughs> Unless it's his turn. Maybe I do have to pick that option on his route. I don't know. Okay, but I'm I'm proud. I got a hit out of Barbara and some blush. I'll take it. I'll remember that for your route. I can experiment the rest of the time. I hear voices in the hall. Okay, you guys again. Um, let's do this one this time. Which means if they don't like you, you'll never get anywhere no matter how good you are. Donald shrugs. <laughs> Alright, well, good talk, guys. Oh. On Wednesday evening, I skipped dinner to go to the gym for our final rehearsal. There are no chairs in place this time. Instead, Blaze lines us up by the entrance. Okay, so we need to practice with the candles. Everyone loves the candle atmosphere. It draws the audience in. But you can't sing well if you're worried about blowing out the flame or lighting someone's hair on fire. Candles only for the procession and the first song. Walk slowly. Look dignified. It builds anticipation. After the first song, blow out your candle and pass it to the person on your right. I'll collect at the end of the row. Oh, who can't do a spark spell? Raise your hand. She arranges the order so that anyone who can't light their own candle can get fire from a neighbor. The candles are very thin and burn with a bright flame that trembles in the faintest breeze. A paper circle along the shaft guards the hand from wax spatters, but we must move slowly to keep the candles alight. We process in stately fashion to the stage, where we form up into multiple rows and wait for Blaze's cue to begin singing. After the first number, we pass over our candles before continuing. When we're almost finished with the set, Blaze signals for attention. This song is a quiet one, and we want our timing and harmony to be smooth as baby fur. So when we get to this one, reach out and take the hand of the person next to you. It helps focus you on the tiniest vibrations. I can't hear any difference, but just because I can't hear it doesn't mean it's not there. We finish our rehearsal and then head off to the cafeteria for our special late picnic. Picnic. Whose hand did I hold? Hmm. Alright. None of us eat much at dinner. We don't want heavy food in our stomachs for the performance. There will be time to eat afterwards. We wait out in the hallway nearby while the audience assembles. Once the designated time has passed and enough people are seated and waiting, we receive the signal to enter. We step into the gym, lighting our candles with a touch of magic or shared wicks, and watch as the audience falls silent, their eyes and ears open to our offering. Slowly we proceed to the stage. We begin to sing. It's the same room that we're always in, but the energy of the music feels entirely different now. After so much pre preparation, the actual performance is both a frustration and a relief. Everything goes smoothly. Even the complicated song Ellen suggested comes out more or less as it should. A few singers might have lost their place, but not enough for the audience to notice. We clasp hands, lower our voices, and then... It's over. The concert ends and the audience applauds. Afterwards, a table of refreshments is revealed. Spicy holiday punch, cheese and olives, and sugar cookies cut into different shapes. Minnie walks up to me. Congratulations on a great performance! Thanks. Kia steps up next to Minnie and takes her hand. She smiles at him and they move on together, making the social rounds. That's the happiest I've ever seen that couple. Some of the professors appear to be in attendance. Oh, hello. Hi! I just wanted to say how... Ah! Uh. Huh. Why did Blaze react like that? 
Overall, it is a pleasant evening. Curiouser and curiouser. Blaze? Don't you like our gym teacher? What did she do? At the close of classes on Friday, all the students are called together for a final assembly. The semester has ended. After this, everyone goes home to their families for the holiday season and will not return until the new year. The crowd quivers, eager to be released. Hello, my young students. The tradition of Christmas is one of giving and sharing. Many of you will be returning to your homes to exchange gifts and spend time with friends and family. But while you are gone, do not forget who you are. Do not forget all that you share with your brothers and sisters in magic. I have a special gift for you. I feel a tingle of white magic sweep over me, though I can't sense any clear effect. On the stage at Potsdam's side, I see Grabiner shudder in distaste. Think of those that you care about. Think of a person who matters to you. If the person you choose is thinking of you as well, you will feel that connection, that affection being shared. What an odd spell. And somewhat unsettling to have an affection-revealing spell cast without my consent. I suppose if you choose not to think of anyone, it will do nothing, and therefore by selecting someone you are agreeing to participate. But what exactly will it share? <laughs> Scheming. If it tightens bonds that already exist, it could strengthen loyalty, but only between students. Only between members of the school touched by the spell. Any outside relationship might then feel less important. I'll leave you to your thoughts. My thoughts are not clear. Who should I think about? Who might I share some sort of connection with? Alright, Ellen. I let my thoughts rest on Ellen. She's shy and bold at the same time. She's a wild seed who's more dedicated to studying magic than most born witches. She hangs back and avoids attention and then openly challenges the school's most notorious professor. But what does she think of me? In my mind, I'm holding out my hand, offering her my support and hoping. And then I sense her fingers catching hold of mine with a squeeze, and I feel the warmth of her smile. Ah, my heart! Oh, that's so cute! We held hands in our minds. It's so real that for a moment I expect to see her standing right in front of me. But of course, it was only in our thoughts. She was thinking of me. Get heck, Damien! <laughs> yes. <laughs> Professor Potsdam climbs back onto the stage and claps her hands. Have a happy holiday, everyone! We'll see you in two weeks! And with that, the balloon bursts and the students begin to stream away laughing and shouting. I head back to my room to wait for my ride. Alright. Hey, Grabby. We'll see ya. Alright, and we're back. And what did you guys say? Not making money myself, but providing an opportunity for others if they're willing to risk a little. You mean playing some kind of game for money? More or less. Come on, let's go show Donald! We might- well, now I'm gonna do bingo on Luke's route. I'll save that for later. Alright, winter vacation. That was so long. Um, okay. Okay, did that. She seemed amused. <laughs> ah, that's fine. Report cards. Uh, did that. Corral rehearsal. We did a final run-through before our performance. We had to skip dinner, but we got a special meal afterwards. Corral concert. Tonight we performed our holiday concert for the rest of the school. Seasons farewell. Professor Poston held an assembly and cast a spell to enhance the bonds of friendship between students. I thought about my connection with Ellen. Okay. 
back to school games. Luke and Logan return from their holiday with a stack of board games. Logan has some sort of gaming club in mind where students will be able to win money. Okay, then we're done. All right, well, I wonder if Damien's gonna make a move soon. Okay, so our stress is zero, so back to black. All right. Once that's maxed out, we can start working on our other stuff and smart and strong. Professor Postum clasps her hands together and smiles. My little moles, I expect that when you encounter objects and obstacles in a dungeon, you are mostly thinking about breaking them. Today's lesson will be of no use for that goal at all. Instead, we will be talking about making an object stronger. With black magic, you can enhance a physical pattern, locking it into its current state so that it can resist all change or damage. What use might you have for this spell? You could protect a fragile tool, perhaps to stop a suspension bridge from breaking when crossing when crossed too often. You might also find it useful to strengthen an obstacle to stop a monster from breaking through it. But remember, the spell is only temporary. Even diamonds are not forever. Nice. For the next 10 turns, target object resists all damage and alteration. When could I use that? I'm worried that there's Damien music playing. <laughs> Hello? Franco! What? Who's yelling? Ellen? What is she mad at me for? I haven't even talked to her since Christmas. Maybe that's what she's mad about? Uh, how was your holiday? Did you know? Know what? That my family would forget about me? Huh? I told you about my sister Jenny and you didn't say anything! I'm sorry, can you start over? I don't understand what you're saying. What did I do? What's wrong? I... You didn't do anything. Then what's the matter? My family. I'm a wild seed. We're not supposed to tell anyone who isn't magical that magic exists. They're not allowed to know. Right. That includes our families. Even though they know we're witches when they send us off to school, after that they forget. Someone makes them forget. So they really forget all about you? Luke and Logan didn't mention anything like that. Virginia says they're not supposed to forget me, just that I'm a witch. But... Since she can't remember why I left, Mama figures she sent me to boarding school to keep me out of sight. Like, I've done something so terrible she wanted to pretend I didn't exist. Like it's better if I'm gone. That's why they didn't want me for Thanksgiving. And for Christmas they just stared at me. Wishing I weren't there. I... Mama and I haven't been close since Jenny was born. At least before, she could brag about how well I did in school. Now I'm a disgrace. It was Jenny who told me what was going on. How they whisper about me. Then she asked me if they taught me how to pick locks at criminal school. I don't know what to say. I never thought about what it must be like for a wild seed if their family forgets about magic. It doesn't seem to bother Luke and Logan, but then when they go home they have each other. Jenny's turning 13 this year. She might have the choice, but I don't know and I'm not allowed to tell her anything. Or else I'll be expelled and lose everything. If I defend myself, if I tell Mama she's wrong about me, they'll wipe my memories! Do you think that's fair? I... say 
I, I mean, it sucks, um, but it's necess it's a necessary suckage. <laughs> like, I don't know what the Aquarian incident was, but there have been references to bad things happening when muggles <laughs> or wild seed not wild seeds. I guess not muggles either, but like the normie normie humans finding out about magic does not result in good things happening. So for the protection of all wizard kind, it is a necessary evil. But maybe Ellen just wants to vent. So I'll stay silent and see. I don't know what to say. I don't know how to fix this. Ellen's here, and she's safe. Nothing happened to her. But knowing that it could have could have has shaken her in a way I've never seen before. Is there anything I can do? I don't know. Not right now, I guess. At least... At least I'm here now, where we have our magic and no one has to lie. Not exactly true, but I can't tell her that. Well, if you need anything, I'll listen. Thanks. It's a miss. I think that went well. I think deep down she knows it's necessary, it just sucks. Poor Ellen. I'm relaxing in my room when someone knocks on my door. Hey, Franco! Luke? I step out into the hall. <laughs> bingo! Nah, man. I like games, but I've never played bingo. There's no guarantee that I'll win. So, we'll do it another time. Oh, my goodness. On Saturday morning, my allowance arrives as usual. So, we are going to study. I think, right? What's the date? Oh crap, I hope I didn't screw myself royally. Uh, it's the 11th. No, I have to go to the mall in March, specifically. So we're fine for now. And when Minnie loses her train of thought, I am a lot less stressed out about it. <laughs> Funny how that works. Today is the first sports club meeting of the spring semester. We're playing football, but this time we've added a bit of magic. Players on the field can still kick the ball with their feet, but they can also use a basic push spell to move it along, since it's an easy spell that almost everyone can do. Excuse me. Since we're restricted to only the basic freshman level push spell, we need an uninterrupted line of sight on the ball, and we have to hold still for a moment to cast it. I don't know why I've got, like... So much burpage going on lately with recording. Like, what is happening to me? Am I just swallowing a ton of air? <laughs> Why all of a sudden? Anyway, magic football. <clears throat> so as long as other players keep moving around the ball, it's difficult to get a shot in. And if the ball does escape the melee, then the goalies are melee. Melee? Melee? I can't remember what my husband told me. One of those. Then the goalies can fend it off, even when it's still far from their territory. Everyone seems to be having a good time. Except Kyo. He's still playing the game, but he looks seriously annoyed about it. Oh, it's because Jacob won the election him and Minnie are spending more time together. Oh, that's, I'm like, what does the election have to do with this? Maybe he objects to mixing magic and sport. Virginia didn't like the idea either originally, but she was willing to give it a try. When the game wraps up, Kyo slips out of the gym without saying anything. At the end of the session, Virginia throws an arm around her roommate. Whee! That was great, wasn't it? It's good to be back. So, it's alright now? You don't mind about the magic? Yeah, it's all good. Maybe not every time, but now and then, why not? It's still fun. I'm glad. Should we have invited Jacob? No way! He's still a huge loser. 
If he cares, he can find out on his own. Ah, uh, the politics of sport. And of the heart. She doesn't want to play with her betrothed. I can't blame her for it. <laughs> he's kind of the worst. He's also trying to date another girl that he's not betrothed to. <laughs> ah. Persistence of memory. Because Ellen is a wild seed, her family is forbidden to know about magic, and their memories have been removed. This appears to have damaged their relationship with her, and they think she is a scandal who needs to be kept out of sight. If Ellen argues with them to tell them the truth, she will break the rules and her memory will be erased as well. No bingo. And football magic. We had a sports club meeting and added the use of the push spell to our game. A simple adjustment to the rules can have quite an effect on the strategy. Indeed, indeed. Alright. How we doing? We're almost there! I don't think we can just black magic it up all week. Or not? I'm enjoying a quiet dinner when I sense someone standing next to me. You can sit down if you want. Um, right! She slides her tray onto the table, landing in a precisely opposite mine before sitting across the table from me. I'm sorry I yelled at you last week, about my family and everything. I was just upset. I needed to shout at someone, and I didn't want to take it out on Virginia. I have to live with her. But it's not fair to yell at you. You didn't make the rules. You're not even from here. Well, I'm glad you trust me enough to feel safe shouting at me. And it's wiser to yell at me than to yell at Gravner. Right. Yeah, I figured you just need to get it off your chest. She drops her gaze from me to the food, slicing neat lines through her grilled fish before swapping hands, American style, and extracting a segment with her fork. After eating for a bit, she smiles at me. What's your family like? Uh... Just when I was relaxing, she suddenly digs a pit trap in my path, and she doesn't even know it. Do you have any brothers or sisters? No. I am an only child. Is that common in magical families? Virginia's got two brothers, but nobody else seems to. Good, a question I can answer while gently steering away from myself. Many adult witches and wizards choose to live full-time in the other world, with unrestricted access to magic. That makes it difficult to raise a family. A human child isn't safe there, especially a baby. You know that, right? She nods. If your child isn't human, then the rules are different, but that only ever seems to make one child. Something in the magic. I'll bet that Pastel and Butterfly Hall doesn't have any siblings. Of course, I know perfectly well that she doesn't. So if two witches want to have a baby, they have to leave the other world to raise it, or have it fostered in the low world. They abandon their own children. Well, sometimes the child is given to a non-magical family to raise completely as their own, like a changeling. Most of the time, though, they'll set up a household and... I don't know the right English words. A kind of servant. Someone to be there all the time while the parents come and go. Like business parents who travel. A nanny? I don't know. Virginia's family is nothing like that. I've been to her house. Well, if her parents like living here instead of the other world, that would make it easier to have more kids. And... your parents? Uh... Um... I'd like to tell you all the details. <laughs> Big? <laughs> um, hmm. Let's 
try that sensitive? I don't want to talk about my family when I know you'll think it's strange. <laughs> that should keep her from asking questions. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to suggest there was anything wrong with... It's new to me. Okay, so that was that. What about being vague? <laughs> that should shut her up. We have servants. My parents are often busy, but I don't feel abandoned. I never actually said that I didn't live with them, but I expect her to take it that way. Huh. Here at school, no one has their parents with them. What about you? You have a sister, right? Anything else? No. I live with Mama and Jenny and Justin. Jenny's dad, my stepfather. My parents divorced a long time ago. Is that rare for wizards? To let a marriage lapse? No, it's pretty common. We live a long time and people change. Well, where I come from, they think it's shameful. Without me around, Mama can pretend Justin was her only husband. Do you see your father often? He doesn't write anymore. I guess family's always complicated, magical or not. I guess so. I wonder, though. If a wizard leaves a changeling child and never comes back, would that child ever know? Or would he think he was just another wild seed? It's an interesting question. I, I'm glad we changed it to vague. I like that better than like, you're gonna think I'm strange, and I don't want you to think I'm strange. The blurg. Shut up. Uh-oh. In the afternoon, I catch sight of some distinctively inhuman silhouettes in the distance. It's Damien. And Pastel. Her delicate wings quiver in an unseen breeze as she displays herself for his attention. Displays is right. Look at that pose. Her hand reaches out to touch his chest. Whatever she's doing, he seems to enjoy it. It's none of my business anyway. Okay, he didn't rebuff her. Maybe he's given up on Ellen. One can hope. Maybe I won't have to fight a demon prince after all. I'm okay with that. Me and my black magic self can just chill out. Today is the first Corral meeting of the second semester. We skipped last week to give everyone more time to get back into magical habits. Hello, everyone. In a little bit, we're going to be doing some vocal exercises, but first we need to talk about the rest of the year. The Corral doesn't always do an official spring concert, because there's not enough draw to sell tickets. So we don't have to. We can spend the rest of the year singing to each other just for fun if we like. Or, if someone has a brilliant idea for a theme, we can try to pitch a concert exciting enough to get an audience. If no one's willing to attend, it would be a depressing end to our year. So think about it for a while. We'll take suggestions and a vote next week. Now for our exercise. Everyone on your feet. We're going to give our lungs a real workout. Blaze lines everyone up and gets them marching around the room to a slow, steady rhythm. After every step, we must clap our hands and vocalize while watching Blaze for cues as he changes the pace. It's simple, but Blaze conducts us faster and faster until people begin running out of breath. Are these real vocal exercises, or is, it, or is Blaze just making them up for fun? Hmm. After we wear ourselves out, we finally get to sit and make a bunch of hymns and ahs. No actual singing today. Do we want a spring concert? If we don't have a concert to prepare for, will we be doing things like this all the time? <laughs> I shudder to think. <laughs> Blaze, you having fun? Ooh. Almost maxed out if I hadn't failed that first day. Blurg. Alright, what to do? Study. I'm stressed out. I gotta sleep. I gotta go sleep. 
Oh boy. I get nervous every time that song starts. I'm like, ah! People come and go in the cafeteria all the time. Most students slide around each other en route to their destinations, barely even noticing the faces that they pass. But sometimes, a path going out intersects with a path going in. Okay, it's you two, thank goodness. Don't make me worry like that, sheesh. Um, did we... Okay, we haven't read this yet. Family arrangements. Ellen asked me questions about my family background, but I mostly talked about wizards in general. She was upset at the idea of magical families abandoning their children in the low world. It turns out her birth parents are divorced, and her father is no longer in contact. Damien and Pastel. I saw them flirting in the halls today. I can't decide whether they're a logical couple or a terrible combination. <laughs> Spring Corral. We had our first Corral meeting. Blaze said there may not be a concert this semester. We need to decide whether we want to try or not, and what our theme should be if we want people to attend. And those two gave me a heart attack, but that's fine. We made it through anyway. 